this is why I'm scared to make beats with AI samples because if the law says the sample is in public domain and even Metro Boomin's legal team is scared to clear these samples, then then what? We don't get paid in advance or royalties on the master side? What's going down is the soon to be... Well, we have some news. It's the Ad Odds podcast for now. We have some news coming up. I didn't intentionally try to tease that out. But sorry, my the intro is is my job. Changes are coming. Uh, what's not changing is the fact that you can get three free months of premium music distribution right now. So if you have beats sitting around that that you haven't gotten on the platforms, you can monetize those. If you have music you are scared to release because you don't want to spend money on your done distributing it to all the platforms, sign up now. Add odds is the code to lost dot com is the place to sign up. And you can get a lot of music uploaded in a three-month period. Just use the code at odds with twoloss.com. Try it out. Get your music up. And if you choose not to continue, you don't pay and your music stays on the platforms. What's going down, everyone? A couple couple two lost updates because I just had a two lost office hours session with a gentleman named Matthew Tilly from Beat Bread. Um, it's an alternative way to fund your career, but you have to have existing royalty streams. They basically give you an advance on your future royalty uh, streams. And basically, all I want to say is I know I took a beating when, you know, from some people, when we talk about the Spotify stuff, this whole business of Beat Bread would not exist without streaming. And it's, I don't know what the value of their company is, but they've advanced millions and millions and millions of dollars. So I would encourage you to watch that conversation. It's on the Two Lost YouTube channel. Check it out, but understand that is a big reason why I think streaming is not as bad as a lot of people think they do. So check that out. Um, also, I'll be putting together or will be putting together an R&B comp- compilation album from Two Lost. So it will, it will feature some Two Lost artists, and then I'll be reaching out to some other artists. We'll probably do some social media activations to find some people that can really sing. We're looking for the singers, the people that can actually sing. No disrespect to the people that do the more rapping or talking melodic stuff, but this project isn't for y'all. It's because the the content that we put together around it is going to require some actual singing. Um, So be on the lookout for that uh, or just some of the stuff that we do around that. So lots of stuff happening with Two Lost, but make sure you get your account. Use the promo code at odds. And um, yeah, check it out. But Payne, we have some stuff that we want to uh, update folks on in regards to, to the AI conversation we were having last week. Uh, never mind. Hold on. I didn't even give Erin a chance to say how she's doing. So I apologize. Erin, how are you doing? I'm great. What's up, y'all? I will be in New York today, if you're listening when this drops. And Tuesday and Wednesday, I will be speaking at Red Bull Records on Wednesday. It's free if you RSVP. The bio is in Red Bull Records, Key Change US, and Indie Weeks, or the link is in all three of their bios. Um, or you can look at my stories, I'll be posting it. So if you're in New York or New Jersey and want to take the train over, come see me. Um, I'll be there. So this is kind of a full circle moment because the first ever tour I was ever on, I used to chase down the Red Bull Records execs so that they could come see my band play. And <clears throat> they were squarely and aloof and I never got a hold of them. But now they have me speak at their office. So I'm stoked about that. But if you're in New York, come see me. I'm going to be in New York. I'm pulling up. I didn't know you were speaking. That's Wednesday. I got to remind myself to sign up. Um, Damn, how many times have you two hung out in different places? It's hey, Payne, you really got to come out of hole. You got to come out of that Wisconsin hole. Um, yeah, you got to la- I was in New York with you, Dame. What are you talking about? I know, but you don't come out that often. You're like a groundhog. No, I'm blackballed. I don't, I don't get booked for these speaking engagements. The- <laughs> Aaron, is this part of Indie Week, the the Red Bull thing? Well, you said I can sign up through Indie Week, so I'm assuming yes. Yes. 
shoot, like some of their nighttime programming that was added. So I'm not exactly sure. I don't think it's like, cause you don't have to be, you don't have to have an Indie Week badge to go. Do you know uh, what I'm gotcha. saying? But gotcha. it's happening during Indie Week. It's a initiative by Key Change US, which is a cohort that I just got into. I think they're announcing that today. Well, are today, not when this comes out. So yeah, it's a cohort and then they combined with Red Bull Records to produce something during Indie Week. So it's supported by uh, A2IM, but I don't think it's specifically their programming. Okay, cool. I'm pulling up. Um, all right. Yeah, my, my bad for cool. Thank you. that. But, but carry on, Payne. Oh, boy. So we have a lot going on. We reported on the BBL Drizzy stuff with sample clearance information based on the information we had. And then, as we know, as we predicted, within the week following us recording that episode, a lot changed. So people were like, why don't you post a new video? This is a new video. I can't, we don't have time machines. I'm sorry. But today I've gotten all the information together and I am actually shocked at the outcome. So the whole AI copyright thing was up in the air. It was a lot of gray area. And now we have some more concrete evidence that things are about to get crazy. A bunch of articles came out, mostly in Billboard. I'm, like I said, I've been liking the, the journalism going on in Billboard. They seem to really be getting to the hearts of these stories, especially the complex ones like these. Uh, speaking of complex, complex was one of the sources. So starting with the Billboard story, let me just run down what they reported uh, with regards to King Wallonius. So if you don't know, King Wallonius is a comedian. He wrote lyrics out, put them into an AI uh, music generator. What came out was BBL Drizzy. Metro Boomin then made a beat out of that song that was floating around the internet because it was viral. Metro Boomin didn't know it was AI generated, which is interesting because a month prior, Metro Boomin had... A month prior to him sampling uh, this AI-generated song, he signed a public statement condemning the unethical use of generative AI. So that was a plot twist. Then another plot twist comes along when Tay Keith incorporates the BBL Jersey sample into a sexy Red and Drake song. When we looked at the credits... It was clear that King Wallonius was left off, but so was Drake as a co-writer. So we didn't really have all the information because the, the system uh, for providing those meta metadata to streaming platforms is a mess. Um, and a lot of people were saying, well, King Wallonius doesn't get credit because it's AI generated. You can't copyright this stuff. A lot of people were saying, well, he wrote the lyrics. So there's just a lot to unpack here. And that's what we're about to do. So. Starting off, I'm just going to read part of the article. And this is the part where King Wallonius clears some stuff up. He says, I think it's a misconception that people think AI wrote BBL Jersey. Wallonius told Billboard in an interview about the track. There's no way AI could write lyrics like, I'm thicker than a snicker and I got the best BBL in history. He adds laughing. I did think it was weird that people were like, no, the AI came up with that. Because there were some weird lines in that in that song that AI, if AI came up with that, if you just typed a uh, prompt that said, all right, time to roast Drake, and that's what came out, that's a little terrifying. So the co-founder of the platform he used tells billboards tells Billboard that he believes AI samples could simplify a lot of the rights management issues inherent to sampling. More on this, because that's a hilarious statement and explains that his model is particularly adept at making realistic songs in the vein of Motown 70s soul, perhaps the most common style of music sampled in hip-hop today. That's what I've been saying. <laughs> he specifically said Motown 70s soul. How are they getting Motown 70s soul input into their system if they're not taking Motown 70s soul and putting it in their system. Right? Am I crazy? I'm with you. That's that's the thing. I feel like this is like that moment where your assumption is that people don't understand what it takes to generate the what generative AI means. 
meaning that there has to be a source and a sample base. That's what AI is about in general, but especially in this context, when it comes to music, it has to have enough samples for it to understand what to generate, especially the tone. If you listen to the voice, it's odd to me that Metro didn't know that it was AI because it's like, who do you know who sounds like that right now? If somebody sounds like that currently and is releasing music, my hope is that they would have a sizable following and garnered some interest from more than just a random uh a uh, comedian on the internet. So that for the Metro thing is interesting. And then I think, yeah, I, I think the guy is snitching on himself, but he's taking into account most users and the internet and the world don't understand what generative AI means or um, that generative AI um, to a degree is, is capitalizing off of stealing sounds, inputs, and things from people. And it's hazy, it's gray matter right now because there's not enough legislation around it. So he's doing what he had to do to create a system, but counting on people to not understand the system, which I think is predatory and unfortunate and uh, disregards the user and the creator in a lot of ways. It's like, we're providing a solution for creators by taking for, from create creators. And I don't like that at all. Payne, Payne, I know that you have sampled in the past, but then you also like, you create beats that you would think would, could be have a sample, but they don't. Um, like how do you, how do you approach sampling? And when you do actually sample, like, you know, how careful are you are with it? Are you giving artists a heads up that there's a sampling? How do you just approach sampling in general? Yeah, I let artists know. I put it right in the beat descriptions. Um, and then I also put, because the opposite happens a lot, where a lot of artists don't want to get my beats because they think they're full of samples. And like the majority of my beats that I've been making do not have samples. They sound like they do. And so I put that in the, the description, capital N, capital no, capital O, samples, so they can see it right there. Um, but you know, not everyone reads the descriptions. I know with B stars you're required to put not not that everyone follows the rules, obviously we're talking about potential copyright infringement here, but you're supposed to put in your sample source if there is one. So I do that, and hopefully others are doing that because it's deceptive on a producer's end not to disclose that information to someone getting your beats. Yeah, because there's like, you know, I guess there's a few different scenarios, right? Like you can, um, you know, knowingly put samples in, don't tell anybody, just kind of rock like that. You can not use sample or you can like just use sounds and, and like claim ignorance. I think that's what a lot of a lot of creators are just people in general. That's somewhere in the middle of like stealing and like doing it the right way. Um, well, that's what labels do all the time, <laughs> every day. Right. And that's why this thing with King Wallonius was funny because people are like, you really think, I got this comment from a bunch of people, you really think they just sampled it not knowing where it came from? I'm like, yeah. So they didn't clear it before they dropped it? Yeah, they, this happens all the time. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, King, King Bologna is saying that, because I, I mean, more black culture, more black um you know, slang is, is going to be fed into more and more AI generative um, tools and you will get those, you know, could come out with the same thing. So I don't think what he said is is correct. If not now, it won't be in a couple months probably. Um, so you're yeah. probably gonna have like a, like a black AI generated, it might already exist. It might be like black culture dot AI or whatever. And you just, you know, put stuff in and then it, tells you <laughs> how it would say something in black like I oh don't god <laughs> well so let me we'll do that for the next episode um the article continues it says often making sorry often music making ai models train on copyrighted material without the consent or compensation of its rights holders a practice <clears throat> that is largely condemned by the music business including metro Boomin even those who are excited about future AI tools. Though, though these AI companies argue this is fair use, which is absolute bullshit, it's not if you actually know the fair use laws, but people 
love to throw around fair use when they when they infringe on copyrights. The legality of this practice is still being determined in the United States. The New York Times have, has launched a lawsuit against OpenAI for training on its copyrighted archives without consent, credit, or compensation. And UMG, Concord, AB, KCO, and other music publishers have also filed a lawsuit against Anthropic for using their lyrics to train the company's large language model. Uh, apparently, Representative Adam Schiff, he's a uh, California has also introduced a new bill called the Generative AI Copyright Disclosure Act to require transparency on this matter, which just by the name of it sounds weak, but whatever. <laughs> it's something. Um, I, but I just have so many problems with this. One, so copyright law is clear. Copyright law says AI-generated music cannot be copyrighted unless it was made with sufficient human input. So how can these... AI platforms set terms for the ownership of what their platforms create when it can't be copyrighted to begin with. Like that's that's problem number one. That that doesn't make sense. Um, and the AI platform that was used to make BBL Jersey explicitly states that users own the content they make. Okay, cool. The problem is who gets credit for a beat made with an AI generated sample. We, and we finally have an answer and it's terrible. <laughs> Here's what the lawyer representing King Wallonia said. And this surprised me. Uh, he said, his name is Donald Woodward. The sample is very, very novel. Wallonia's attorney told the publication, there's nothing like it. Woodward who's helping to guide Wallonius through this complicated process says the BBL Drizzy master recording is viewed as public domain which means it isn't copyrighted. What? Well, Wallonia has created the original using AI. He did write the lyrics, so he's been given credit and payment for his sample on You My Everything. Wood, Woodard added, we are focused on the human portion that we can control. You only need to clear the human side of it, which is the publishing. Um... Okay, but does Metro deserve credit? His lawyer, who Wanda Carter told Billboard, no, that Metro doesn't want ownership or royalties from You My Everything. She had a, con a conversation with Metro, his manager, and his label, Republic Records, about how to navigate a proper release of BBL Jersey, but chose not to pursue it because they didn't know how Clarence would have worked with AI. Metro decided he wasn't going to exploit the record because trying to clear it was going to be the wild, wild west, she added. And there you have it. It's a mess, and it opens a whole new can of worms. It opens a whole aisle of cans of worms. This is why I'm scared to make beats with AI samples, because if the law says the sample is in public domain and even Metro Boomin's legal team is scared to clear these samples... Then, then what, we don't get paid in advance or royalties on the master side? That could be, right, because no one owns the sound recording, but you can claim ownership of the underlying composition if you write some of the lyrics. If you don't write the lyrics, if you just hit, you know, if you type in make me a soul song that I can sample and hit generate, you don't own any part of that legally. So what does that mean? If you chop the sample up, is that sufficient human input? We don't know. So you could conceivably find yourself in a situation where you make a sample, make the beat, and then they're like, yeah, you don't get shit for this because you don't own any, any of this. No one owns this. And then, and then, sorry, Dan, go ahead. I, I have No, I was just going to ask, like, how do, you, how do you even check if it, like, came straight out of does is that just in the in the history of the probably i'm sure there's metadata uh, yeah i don't i don't even know what to say well and then the other thing too because all these all these people are just chomping at the bit foaming at the mouth just ready to call it uh, over okay you know you hear this all and it's mostly just bitch ass dudes that are mad um, for whatever reason, it, you know, I, I think that's really the genesis of a bitch ass dude. They're mad. 
and then they go on the internet and they've completed their full villain's journey. You know what I mean? So a lot of a lot of little bitch ass villains in the comments love parroting the line that, well, AI is going to take over anyway. It's over for you, producers. All right. So if a rapper makes an AI beat, what happens? They don't own any of it because there's not sufficient human input. They're not writing anything other than their lyrics. So then what happens? Legally speaking, if the sound recordings generated by AI can't be owned by anyone, then nobody can make sound recording royalties from it, right? Legally. But then the issue is Sexy Red and Drake and the label are making money off that song. So right now, people are just kind of doing whatever with this technology. And some people like Metro Boomin's legal team is like, no, we don't want to touch that. It's too weird. Some other people are like, now let's just do it and see what happens. We'll deal with the consequences later. It's pretty weird. It's a weird time. It's kind of like when sampling law first took form and that, and I wasn't, I guess I was alive then because it was what the, the very early nineties, very late eighties. And there was this great reckoning because how, how did they, I don't know how they dealt with that. I, I, w- I would love to know what happened retroactively to all the albums that came out that were full of samples before sampling law was really, you know, set, set into, into place and fully realized. Cause right now, like they're, they don't, we don't know. And if there's a rush of AI generated music that's released now and people monetize, maybe in two years, maybe in three years, all the legislation comes down the pipeline and they solidify some types of laws that change all that. So then what happens? Everyone's music gets pulled off the platform. They get sued. What what happens? And who's suing them? Because if the music, if the sound recording isn't technically owned by anyone, what's going to happen? A bunch of robots are going to manifest in physical form from these AI platforms and take us to court. None of this makes sense. 